All right, what's up? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're enjoying these series on uh, Bandit Over the Wire. Um, the, my name is John Hammond, and we're just going to jump right back in. <laughs> it's so weird to fit in the intro, you know? <laughs> All right, let's go to level three. It's where we just left off. Um, we just stored the password in our Bandit 3 file, so we can SSH pass tag P using that file that we've got the password stored in and changing the user so we actually SSH into that correct user. Great. Cool, we're logged in. So the prompt here is the password for the next level is stored in a hidden file in the in here directory. Okay, so we can see the in here directory just in our home directory. We can cd to change directory into there. You can see our prompt changes. And we ls, but there's nothing in here, seemingly. Um, it says we can use these commands to solve this level. So I'm going to assume that um, it's a hidden file. And we can view those with ls you can say ls tac a or tac tac all. Do not ignore entries starting with the period because those are hidden files typically in Linux. ls tac a and there's a dot hidden file. We can cat this out and there's a password for the next level. Cool. Let's break out a list. Do a uh, nano bandit 4. And now we can change the password keep moving. Great, we're logged in. All right, how do we solve this one? Password for the next level is stored in the only human readable file in the in here directory. Uh, okay, what have we got? All of these files, oh they all have a hyphen so that's not fair. <laughs> kind of using the same trick from uh, the previous level, it was either level 2 or level 3, um, but we were able to use the period and the forward slash to denote files in the current directory that we want to look at. Looks like if I wanted to cat file 00, zero uh, there's a lot of nonsense, not really what we're looking for. Okay, so we can run file and use a dot period and forward slash, just a period and a dot, same thing. <laughs> um, and we'll use the asterisk here to denote all of the files in the home directory. Okay, so it's seeing that all of these are data, and file 07 is ASCII text. So, a little bit of uh, deductive reasoning. We can probably assume that file 07 is um, what we wanted to see here. But if we were to just try and cat out all the others, it had said... If your terminal is messed up, try the reset command. That's something worth noting. If you ever accidentally just cat out a binary file or stuff with like real data that just won't display in your terminal, run the reset command and you'll almost always get your shell back. All right. We could have just used find, I think. And um, I, I think that's one way to do it. Other than This is a small way because I don't know if find will actually give you human readable files. Normally when I search for finds a man page or the manual for readable, it just things that matches files that are actually like readable, as in you have the privilege and the user like a access control to be able to read that file. So if you know using find to find human readable files, that would be a good way to do it. Strings is also a good one in this case. You can strings everything. Um, remember we have to use the dot forward slash because all of these files are starting with a hyphen here. So if we were to run strings dot forward slash everything, it will find this password, which we assumed, as, as we know, was in file 07. Yep. Okay, cool. Let's jot that down in bandit 5 now, right? Yeah, okay, cool. And we'll jump into that level. Level 5. Okay, so now we're actually going to start to use the find command and use it for real. <laughs> use it for its real goodness. Um, we know that, okay, in here, in this in here directory, there are other other directories, like maybe here's 0, 0, etc, etc, etc. You can you know, run the find command on its own just to kind of see all of the files that you're now looking at, because find will recursively display all the files and directories that it sees um, with the path that you specify. If I were to say start it at the root directory, it'll run through everything in the system, but by default, find will just work in your uh, current working directory or the period here, find dot. Okay, so we want to be able to find a file that is human readable, so we'll just assume here. Um, 
a specific number of bytes in size and not executable, so not really like a kind of program. We can run things like ls tac l to see the size of some directories or some files here. And ls also has a tac capital R uh, functionality or, or an argument or a flag that will recursively look through. That, that's what that capital R is, recursively look through subdirectories and folders here. So if we were to combine those, you can use tac LR, capital R, and you can see, okay, here are the bytes that some of these has, all these files have as they are being explored in each of their own subdirectories, etc. We could kind of go by hand here and find, okay, what actually has 1,033 bytes as is part of its size um, and isn't executable, so isn't no mark, uh, marked green here with LS colors or with that X for the executable bit in LS tac L displaying the uh, permissions here. So let's go ahead and try the find command. I'm going to check out the man page to see. We know that readable, I'm, I'm searching by pressing the forward slash, by the way. That's uh, just a sweep down to find things in uh, man pages or when you have things queried in, like, in less and buffer just like this. Readable will work just like that. Um, we know there's something executable that we wanted to find. So... There is a tag executable and that will match files that are executable, but we want to find things that aren't executable. So how do we do that? We had search for not, but that doesn't really help us. You're going to have a lot of occurrences of not in this case. <laughs> I saw later on as I was seeing the readable page, I thought I saw some examples. Okay, if you keep scrolling down and down, you'll see in the man page, here are some examples of what you can run. And some of them, it looked like, are using this exclamation point to say not. Here, this one, this one right here. Search for files which are executable but not readable. So this backslash exclamation point comes right before the readable flag. So it's trying to say not readable. We can probably use a not executable to find the file that we're looking for. And we knew we wanted a specific size. So I'm using size, number of n things or n units, c for bytes. So we'll use n, the number that we want, and then c following it to say that many bytes. So we were to run find, we can say our current directory with a period, we don't have to. And then we can say um, that backslash exclamation point to say not executable, and then size 1033 bytes. Okay, and we get one immediate result. Maybe hero7.file2. Let's check it out. We can go ahead and cat this file. And there's our password. You can see a lot of white space that it was included, just so probably it could make that size requirement, just for the difficulty of the, of the war game here. But let's note this as bandit6. I'm using control D to break out of the SSH connection that quickly. Nice. Okay, now we're moved into level six. What is the prompt here? The password for the next level is stored somewhere on the server and has the following properties. Okay, well, let's see how we can figure out, get the size and user and group. Hmm. Check out the man, man page for the find command again. Might be able to search for the word user. Okay, user, just like that, is owned by user username. So that makes things easy. What about group? Group, just like that. Same kind of syntax. Okay, so we want find from the root directory because it's somewhere on the server, right? We'll use size 33 bytes. User can be bandit7. Yep. And owned by group bandit6. Do we get a hit? We're getting a lot of permission denied errors. Okay, okay. Oh, hey, we found something that doesn't have a permission denied error. But the permission denied kind of makes it hard to be able to see some of this stuff. So let's... That permission denied output 
is actually coming on the standard error stream. So when we talked earlier about the cat command and the cat hyphen, that hyphen was denoting the file descriptor for standard input, the all the input and things you do on your keyboard. Standard output is all the stuff you see on the screen, but standard error is similar to standard output in that you see it on the screen, but it's reserved for error messages and bad things. So that the file descriptor and the number for that is actually number two. So whenever you want to try and hide all those errors, permission denied or no such file directory, you can take at the very, very end of the command you are running, the number two, and then redirect it with that uh, greater than symbol. And let's put it in the digital garbage can. That's uh, device forward slash dev, right, for devices, and null forward slash dev forward slash null. And now... If we run that command, we won't have all those all those permission denied errors, and we'll just get one result. Cat this out, and there's our password for Bandit 7. Sweet. Let's put that right here. And now we're rocking to Bandit 7. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you're enjoying these. Hope you're learning uh, some new things. I uh, hope I'm not going too fast because I know I am assuming you know some things and not assuming that you don't and just hoping that you'll follow through. But uh, hey, thanks for watching regardless. Please let me know what can be improved on and uh, what you'd like to see more of. So see you in the next video.